So most of the time when someone thinks of a computer, they think of a big tower like this, or even something like this, big motherboard, big GPUs, big everything, or even something like this, like a Dell Optiplex down here, which is pretty small, but still a full computer. Now, what if I told you that this right here is a full PC with an Intel CPU inside? It's got little to no IO, all it's got on the front are antennas, but it's a full PC. It doesn't even have a power button on the outside. So what is it? How good is it? And can we possibly game on it? Let's give it a look. This is a one land mini PC. I bought it on Facebook Marketplace for about 20 bucks. And what it's actually intended for is running basic software that just needs to always be running. It does not have a power button on the outside because it's not supposed to turn off. It's supposed to just constantly run at all times. It's got an Intel Celeron on side, I believe. Not by any means a powerful PC, but for all intents and purposes, it is a full PC. So let's open it up. I believe all we've got to do to open it is the screw there and the two on the side. Let's quickly get it unscrewed. Got it open, got a CPU under the cooler here. I'm not gonna lift off the cooler, I don't think. Not just yet, at least. I'll see what I can get from system information. Bright red PCB, which is interesting. A SATA drive, which I didn't expect. I was fully expecting it to be NVMe, just because of the size. I mean, for the age, it makes sense, but I was expecting at least M.2. Got sodium RAM, of course. Just quickly pulling that out. I suspect it's not gonna be any more than four gigs. I believe it's DDR3. Let's chuck that back in. Fan header, CMOS battery there. There's our power button. It's, yeah, it's a full PC. On this PCB, like I'm not seeing anything missing. CPU and graphics card, it's integrated graphics. SSD, RAM, it does have an external power supply. CMOS, it's got everything you'd expect out of a PC. But is it any good? I'm gonna try chuck it on my test bench and install Windows on it. I can't screw it back together for the time being though, because I kind of need the power button. Okay, I've got it set up, connected to a monitor, keyboard. So I'm just gonna lift off the top here. Hit the old power button. Here we go. I've got a Windows boot drive in, but we've got visuals. Let's try and install Windows. We're actually in the Windows boot screen. Let's install Windows on this thing. Okay, so this device has 30 gigs of storage on it. That's a slight issue. Let's still give it a crack. In worst case, let's chuck a new SSD in it. Two seconds later. Okay, I was able to start getting Windows on it, but I thought about it. Now, if I'm going to do testing, I'm going to need more storage anyway, so let's quickly switch the SSD. Just swapping in something basic I have on hand. Patriot Burst Elite. SATA 3, still a SATA drive, 120 gigs. Still not a lot, but it's enough. Let's switch it in. I have now switched the SSD. SD out, but while I'm in here, from everything everything I've read online and the fact it doesn't have info on it, I believe it's only got two gigs of RAM. So I'm gonna pump it up to eight off the bat, as I've got an eight a dim of eight here, which is probably overkill for this system. But I want to give it somewhat of a fighting chance. Ideally, I'd just pump it up to four to keep it a little bit more authentic. I've also also found one slight benefit. While it does need uh the power buttons on the inside, as soon as power is plugged into it, it turns on. All it needs is power and it turns on, so you don't need to unscrew it every single time. So I've got it all running with Windows and everything, installed a few things to test. But yeah, it's running an Intel Celeron uh, 1037U with only two cores, two cores and two threads. By no means a powerful CPU, 1.8 gigahertz. Eight gigs of memory, the SSD we put in. Uh, and then of course, Wi-Fi, but we don't have anything for graphics yet. But let's start doing some benchmarking, including a run on 3D Mark. Okay, on 3D Mark, I've got Skydiver here because it's basically the only test that'll actually make it through. So let's run Skydiver and get some results. Running now. It's a little stoppy start, it's not looking good, but let's see what the results are. And we've got our results, they're not great, but they're livable. And with that, let's try and play a few games. I don't have my standard benchmarking games, I've just got some very light ones for this. Okay, I've got the original Doom, the, the Steam version of the original De uh, Doom. According to Steam FPS, it's about 50 FPS. Looks fine, runs fine, no major notes. For Half-Life 2, these are the settings we've got on. We're running surprisingly well with Half-Life 2. About 30 FPS. Yeah, sitting about 30 FPS. Ooh, we're even getting up to 60. That seems impressive, actually. Then we've got Portal 2 that is running at about 22 FPS. It's rough. Portal 2 is by no means hard to run, and it, it's struggling. But you know what? I'm actually pretty impressed with that. So... Seeing Portal inspire, inspired some hope. Um, so I'm trying to launch God of War, but I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, okay, I didn't think so. But you know what? It worked half decently for some of the more basic games. Considering the fact that it's running a Celeron and an old one at that, integrated graphics, it did pretty impressively actually. Especially because this computer just is not designed for this. I talked a little bit about it earlier, but it's essentially designed to stay turned on at all times and just run a program. The main feature and the things things advertised for is actually a digital signage machine, which is actually essentially the computer that you see running monitors for dis and displays that have advertisements and stuff on them, for example, for things like stores and companies. You're supposed to mount it on the back of a TV or something, and then it's got a custom software to run that. It is not at all designed to run things like Windows. And so truthfully, the fact that it can do it at all is pretty impressive in my opinion. I just find it such a fascinating little device, especially because I got it for like 20 bucks off Facebook marketplace and it's got such a history to it the fact that it's 
you're supposed to run little signages and I've seen a few people run little servers on them and it can do this and it can it can run Portal 2 at a playable-ish frame rate. You, if you just wanted a basic web browser, honestly, it'd be fine. I think that's really cool. But anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video covering this little one LAN PC. It was good fun checking out this little device. I find it really interesting because yeah, CPU, RAM, SSD, got everything a basic computer would need. It's a really cool little device. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I'm a small creator and it would help out a ton. I hope to see you in the next one and bye-bye.